Hey guys, fall is upon us. So I thought I would start this holiday season, this Halloween holiday season with a bloody fault line drip cake with some meringue ghosts. This one was super cute to do, super fun to do. So if this looks like something you wanna see, stick around and we'll get right to it after the intro. So the first thing I did was make the meringue ghosts because I they need quite a bit of um, baking and cooling time. So I did these first and these are the ingredients that you'll need. You'll need some egg whites, some sugar, some cream of tartar, some vanilla, and some mini chocolate chips for the eyes. I also used a large piping bag with a half inch round nozzle to pipe the ghost. I will link the ingredients and the proportions in the description. So first things first, we need to get these egg whites whipped up. Now make sure that they are at room temperature before you start this process. So I just put them in the mixer with the whisk attachment. Start it on medium and wait until it gets a little frothy. And when it starts getting frothy, then you will add your cream of tartar. The cream of tartar is going to add some stability to this whipped egg, right, egg whites. So there is my cream of tartar. Just gonna put it all in one shot. Just get it all mixed up in there. And you're gonna whip this till you get soft peaks. Soft peaks means that when you try to pull the whisk out of the egg whites, it comes up, but it's it kind of flops over and it's really airy. And when you get it to the soft peak, stage then you're going to add very gradually your sugar i just used regular granulated sugar but you can also use the ultra fine granulated sugar i find that this works out just fine i just scraped down the bowl to make sure that everything was getting incorporated and turn it up to high and mix it until you get stiff firm peaks and firm peaks are just what what i said they're firm peaks i forgot that i added some vanilla there too now I'm going to show you what the firm peak stage looks like. And you can know that you're kind of getting there because the meringue kind of gathers, there it is, gathers around the whisk. It starts kind of accumulating on the whisk. And there I just showed you that the, ha the half inch round tip. And I just put the meringue in the bag and you just leave it hovered above your silicone mat or your parchment paper and let the meringue kind of puddle itself. Don't start with the tip directly on the mat because then it'll go just out. You want it to be kind of bulbous at the bottom and kind of irregular. Ghosts are not completely, a, you know, just a cone shape. So what I do is I push pressure, I made pressure, and then I released and then I added more pressure. Now you'll put them in the oven. They baked at 200 for an hour and a half. Then I opened the door and left them in there for another, I think, three hours. You could do it up to overnight so that it cools down and that prevents it from cracking. But before I put them in the oven, I put the mini chocolate chips as eyes. Isn't that cute? You could also use non-pareils, non -pareils, that's hard to say, the black little sugar candies, or you could use um, more meringue that you color black with a very small piping tip or you can even draw it on after they're done with like an edible pen now here I'm just torting my layers I did this is just a almond vanilla cake recipe that I dyed half of it red going with the the blood theme here and this is simple syrup that I put on each of my layers after I had them leveled off that's just equal parts water and sugar you bring it to a boil and then you let it cool you, the, the point is to um, dissolve the sugar. And this will keep it moist as you're working with it. And I'm just using my ceramic, ceramic, my plexiglass disc as a display board. So there's no cardboard board underneath it, not necessary for this. And this is just dark chocolate gana ganache that I added a little black to. The whole theme here is red, white, and black and I'm just alternating the, the tears with the black as a filling. <laughs> 
There are quite a few layers in this cake, so just keep it as level as you can. You could add a board partway through with some dowels if you wanted to make sure that it was more stable. Now, since this is just a six inch cake, these layers are just six inches, and I didn't go, if I did one more layer of cake, I probably would have done that, but um, also the fact that I'm using ganache as a crumb coat and the filling, it's a little more sturdy. So just get that as smooth as you can. And here I'm showing you the fault line. I'm just using white buttercream around the middle, irregularly piped on there because I didn't want it to be even. And this is what your sprinkles are gonna stick to. You could use whatever sprinkles you want. This is just a mix that I found at Michael's and it just had the black and the white in it. I could have added some red, but I, I couldn't get to the store this week. So I, um, I just had to forego that part and add some red in other places. Now this is just simply, like I said, glue to stick the, the pearls on. And just use your hand and scoop it on there and just press them in. There's going to be a lot of fallout. A lot of fallout. Just put the pan, I put a pan underneath, a sheet pan, to kind of catch as many as those of those as I can. Because if they don't hit the ground, to me, they're fair game. Scoop them up. <laughs> Reuse them. They're not dirty. And just press these in so they stick. And once I had those on, I just went ahead and put it in the refrigerator to firm up for a good, yeah, it was like 10 to 20 minutes. And now I'm going to do the buttercream on the rest. I just stuck with white for the entire cake because I wanted the contrast between the red and the white. I thought about doing it black to contrast with the, um, the dragees in the middle because there's a lot of white in there too. But I thought that the red would pop more against the white. So I'm just piping this along the edge of the fault line and around the bottom and the top and filling in. You want this to be thicker, stick out further than where your dragees are because when you level this out, when you smooth it out, you don't want to be dragging those dragees. You need those to be out or like below the surface of the outer layer of buttercream. Now just smooth this as best as you can. Um, it can be a little harder since it's a taller cake and you have that fault line because the more you smooth that edge in the middle, the, the smaller, the thinner your fault line gets. So I like to kind of smooth those separately. Level out that top and then I'm just going to do another thin coat. My buttercream was a little on the soupy side. It wasn't as firm as I would like it to be, as thick as I'd like it to be. So I just little helpful tip when it's wrestling with you get it as good as you can pop it in the freezer for 10 minutes come back to it let that bottom layer firm up you have a lot better chance of getting a better end result if you do it in more thin coats rather than trying to get it all done at once and there, I just sprayed a little water that helps me get it smooth I get a lot of questions about that what are you spraying on the cake that's just water I would only do that towards the end, when you're almost to the point where you have it where you want it. Otherwise, it can thin out your buttercream a little bit if you're using it through the whole thing. Now I'm getting my, my bloody drip ready. I originally was going to do a mirror glaze, but it turns out I'm glad that I didn't, and I will tell you why. Um, the mirror glaze, I was worried that it was going to drip beyond the fault line. In the design, I wanted to have specific places for it to be, and I didn't want it to drip down too far. So actually using candy melts turned out to be the best option. I did add a little bit of oil, vegetable oil, oil to the candy melts when they were once they were melted, just so that it dripped a little bit more. But the combination of the cake being chilled and the fact that I'm using candy melts, it solidifies faster than a mirror glaze would. So it can only go down so far in the drip before it stops moving. I added some onto the top, which actually, it was fine because you couldn't see it, but I think that was just autopilot. I always do that with a drip, but it's hard to get it smooth before it solidifies. So anyway, and now I'm adding the bloody drip on the bottom edge of the fault line also. Now you can see why I didn't want it to drip into the fault line, the top layer. 
And to finish off that upper edge of the fault line, I just used a brush and the, um, the candy melts. And I just kind of brushed it on there. You kind of have to work a little faster with this because it's, you know, candy melts, they solidify, they harden pretty quick. So don't dawdle, I guess is what I'm saying. If it does get too thick on you, just pop it in the back of the microwave for maybe 15 seconds on 50% power and that will make it thinner again. Now I know I got a little messy with the chocolate, but that's okay because I knew that once it's solidified and firmed up on this chilled cake, that you can just scrape it off real easy. I didn't mean for that whole drip to come off, but that's okay. It looked fine. And I'm just using the corner of this spatula it's actually a palette knife an artist palette knife that i have only used on cakes and it's one of my favorite tools and then to clean off your board so after your meringues have cooked this is what they look like aren't they cute i made a whole bunch more but you know what happened my um, rack wasn't level in my oven see that one right there and they all kind of leaned <laughs> they all look like they were had too many drinks really tired really sleepy that's okay because i had enough for the cakes so I'm just lining them up where I want them, using a little buttercream to get them to stick. And I'm going in between the ghosts and piping a little black to bring in some more of that black color. I like for my designs to have some cohesiveness, something that ties it all together, and I typically go for a texture or a color. And for this one, it's the color. And I added a few little ghosts on the bottom. One of the ones that was leaning, that's all right. I thought it looked like he was in motion. And I'm just using my um, 1M star tip just to pipe a little finishing border on the bottom. I didn't want it to be too tall. So there you go, guys. Isn't it cute? So I have some more ideas for Halloween and for the fall season. So be looking out for that. I'm also going to try to incorporate some more of my typical traditional style of design. So... Like, share, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.